Today is Friday, September 6th. It's finally Friday. Yes, in that voice. <laughs> and today is Robots and Nonsense. So, AI. AI is the buzzword of our time. And no matter who you are, you're looking to find a way to make your product have something to do with AI. And that's true of Minecraft. Minecraft is getting an AI assistant from Facebook and MIT? All right. So yeah, a game that is supposed to simulate surviving and doing all the little menial tasks from surviving is giving you a way to automate that with AI? It sounded like the assistant was going to help you build things. So it was like, hey, help me, or help you with tasks, including build things. So like, hey, help me do this, or help me find lava, or help me whatever. But it's kind of going in both directions. Because as the AI helps you, and you define a goal, it's also learning from you to be able to do those things better by itself in the future. So. Seems like with millions of Minecraft players, that AI would learn everything it needs to fairly quickly. Yeah. And without a lot of headache. It's yeah. amazing how like well Minecraft has aged, because I still play it from time to time, just well, get back into it. It's the beauty of you know the fact that even when it was launched, it looked like garbage. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. It's getting ray tracing. The ray tracing I looks pretty that. amazing. <laughs> yeah, but I don't think your average computer can. <laughs> well, then they've no. had lots of crazy like no. hacks that can handle that too. But if you've got a twelve hundred dollar video card, you can barely manage ten eighty p. But it also has, you know, it's that like make your own fun kind of game. Yeah. Then yeah. that's of course that's going to be perennial, right? Like correcting, like you know, collecting all the villagers and making them your. And, Breeding them. Your slave <laughs> citizens who must farm your lands for you. Who would ever get tired of that? Uh, That's a good update. So robots have been flying planes for a long time now. We've got the whole drone program. We've got autonomous, fly, autonomous aerial vehicles. And that's usually done in software that interfaces directly with the flight controls. But what about old-fashioned planes that still have sticks and throttles. When are we going to get robots who can just sit down in the pilot seat? The time is now. Robot pilot that can grab the flight controls gets its plane license. So yeah, this it looks a little overly elaborate. <laughs> there it is. But it can fly a, a plane. Beautiful machine, but now, it can't actually sit in the seat, so I led you astray there. You have to remove the seat <laughs> and bolt this guy in. <laughs> looks like they had to remove both seats, but... It's That's probably, probably a, a one-seater because there's only one set of controls there. Oh, no, there's two there, right? Yeah. So I think the idea is this guy's going to be a co-pilot. So if the pilot is incapacitated for whatever reason, this thing can take over. It's a giant life-size drone. Yeah, and so, but it does not interface with the plane electronically. Or, you know, like it doesn't, you don't plug in like telemetry or whatever. It uses computer vision to read the dials, although it doesn't look out the window. This is completely fly-by instrument. And it reaches out and grabs the, the fly stick and the throttle. Does it all manually. Pretty That's impressive. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Would you fly on a plane where that was flying it? Probably. I'm uh, not, not sure that I would. Maybe after some testing. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of testing. Give it a few years. <laughs> How many hours does this pilot have again? Oh, 100. Oh, no. I'm not, <laughs> not going to fly in that plane. But 100 a million in simulation. Oh, okay. Well, that's probably all right, yeah. then. For the last 10 minutes, he's been hyperspeed simulating <laughs> everything about this plane, so he's good. Don't Whoa. Worry. If we do crash, it's going to be, you're not going to remember. Like, it's going to just be over so quickly that it's fine. It's going to be he's, catastrophic. If he, if he loses control, he's designed to just point it at the ground. Like me in GTA. So we have entered into this new world where some parts of the U.S. are okay with weed, and some aren't, and the feds aren't. But Arrest everybody and ask questions later. They're pretending that they are maybe okay with it, but who knows when they'll change their mind. You know, it's this crazy thing. But some places who are cool with it have turned to artificial intelligence to do something a little unexpected. Illinois County to use algorithm to automatically expunge old marijuana convictions. 
So they're looking for like the non-violent, like possession kind of things and not the like armed robbery things. Those don't get expunged. But the other things do. Armed robbery while high on marijuana? <laughs> what percentage of marijuana arrests do you think that is? <laughs> hey man, I need to use a gun later. Let me get high. I'm just telling you what like what the, the what they trained the AI to do. So uh, I assume that this AI is also going to go back and after it expunges all this conviction, it's going to refund all that tax money we threw at this stupid <laughs> thing? Is that something it can do? We should figure out. I bet that's a data set. We could do an open records request and find out how many things were thrown out and then we could guesstimate exactly how much taxpayer. Like, we're not going to get it back. But it, I would like to know that number. Not just taxpayer money, but uh, seizures. Yeah. Yeah. We might actually have a net positive on that for like money that went into the coffers used to operate things. Yeah, but <laughs> we're paying the thugs? Actually, that might be a basis for a lawsuit. That would be incredible. A lawyer goes after the state for seizing things that is now not illegal. Yeah, good luck with your house getting raided and then find <laughs> child pornography. <laughs> So, we've talked about uh, deepfakes a lot, and we talked about that thing that Google does where they have the, what was the name of that thing where they'd make your appointments? I always forget the name of that. Oh, the Google Assistant thing? I can't remember. But it was really good at doing your, not your voice, but a voice. And then you kind of put the two together and put that with deepfakes, and you can realistically simulate voice. So, what would you do with that? Well... Obviously, one of the first things someone thought to do with that was crime. <laughs> a new kind of cybercrime uses AI and your voice against you. As I was looking at this, I thought that this would be incredible if somebody got like Bill Gates's personal assistant's phone number and phoned them up as Bill Gates and was like, yeah, I've decided to donate $100,000 to this charity. Here's the bank account and routing number. Just go ahead and do that that's whenever you get That's essentially what happened here. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly what happened. So this was a German company. And... They had like the second in command, the guy who actually performed the tasks, and then the CEO was the one that they faked, that they simulated. They called him up and it was like, hey, uh, I just did this deal and we need to get it done right now, so wire some money, here's the information. And the guy was like, yes sir. And he went and did it. And it went through and it was like, okay, you're gonna get a confirmation or some kind of like return transfer or something pretty soon. In the meantime, I just did another deal. So go ahead and send more money. To, and this guy, to his credit, was like, wait a minute. That doesn't seem right. In fact, the CEO had nothing to do with it. It was yeah. all simulated. That's crazy. Mm. Terrifying. We're living in a time where hop on a call might not be reliable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be worse because it might mean we have to meet in person. What a great excuse that would be if we could use it. It's like, I'm sorry we don't hop on calls. It's insecure. <laughs> You're going to have to use your words to articulate what's required. Load the pigeon. And put your wax <laughs> brand on it so we can be sure. So we've got robots that do a lot of different things. And it's kind of weird because we report on these robots. And yet none of them are in our lives yet. Where are these robots? Where are these smart vending machines? We don't even have the spill robot. Where are Major the cooking urban robots? centers, probably. Yeah, but are they're they? not rolling out. They're not successful, I guess, because we need them. We need these robots. No one cares about Kentucky. <laughs> and here's another robot that we'll probably never get. Bear Robotics is raising big bucks for robots that deliver food to restaurant patrons. This seems amazing. If I can hit a button on my table and have instant drink refills, that would make both of our lives easier. But here's my question about this little guy, and I don't know if they answer this or not. Does he just come to the edge of the table and then I got to reach it over? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's, I don't know if I like that. That's not as good. I mean, it's going to be like, you know, you could still go to a full service restaurant, but I would be, for the level of service that we usually get in a restaurant, this is probably better. But would this little robot bring us X plus certain number of rolls? No. <laughs> he would never deviate from the roll algorithm. Yeah. The days of getting lucky with roll count are over <laughs> once the robots take over. <laughs> Although I guess he probably wouldn't be loading the basket, right? Right. So it'd still be... Maybe we need a helper. Like the robot is an assistant for a human being. And so the, the two of them, 
you know, it's like the uh, it's like the buddy cop thing, except it's a you know a robot and a human working together. I always feel bad for waiters when they have to carry like the super hot plates on their arms. Well, that's the other thing. If that plate is the temperature of the sun, and I'm the guy sitting on the edge, and I got to <laughs> unload everybody's Stop! hot plate. That sucks. Yeah. What about if you had just a round table that could rotate? Like a lazy Susan. And then this guy could just slide everything over onto the... <laughs> the malfunctions of that would be amazing, where the table like starts accelerating, and then the, the, the centrifugal force just, just, just keeps loading projectiles onto it as it launches them across. That would be yeah. amazing. But, you know what? Waiter robot... Although, you know, we talk about self-driving trucks and how those are going to disrupt the job market. Isn't food service, like, number two or three for jobs? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I've, aren't we like five years overdue for our food, our Black and Decker food dehydrator? Also, food dehydrator. Yeah, from like Back to the Future, they put a little tiny pizza in and it rehydrated it into a full pizza. Oh, a That's rehydrator. Far away. We were talking about Back to the Future. <laughs> we actually talked about something like that. So, Chris, did you read this one? I did. I was very excited about this. This story. was. This is hilarious. The problem with robots, and if we look back at that previous robot, he was pretty nondescript, right? Yeah, yeah. I would have thought that was a trash can if I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> nothing. Just <laughs> literal garbage, nothing of value. Pour your drink on it. The robot's just like feelings deleted. <laughs> <laughs> so the thing about robots is people don't necessarily empathize with them. And we've seen a lot of these little tiny delivery robots, people will attack them. I yeah. don't understand attacking them. I could see, like, accidentally running into one or not paying attention to it, but, like, I don't understand attacking. But we also talked about the uh, the spill robots. <laughs> yeah, people and just avoid them. People had a lot of contempt and sometimes fear. Sometimes people would think that the robot was stalking them as they went from mile <laughs> to mile. You have 30 seconds to comply. <laughs> so what do you do to make people less terrified of your robot? It might be simpler than you can imagine. How googly eyes has solved one of today's trickiest UX problems. And it, damn it, it sure does, doesn't it? <laughs> does it? It's adorable. It's, yeah. It, the article makes you think that it's just like the stick-on plastic googly eyes, but these are actually... No, art- they move. They're yeah. articulated googly eyes. It looks in the direction that it's going to go. And, uh, like, kids apparently were standing on this thing and just... Like, like climbing all over abusing it. Abusing the crap out of it. And the googly <laughs> eyes was all it took to make them stop. So this thing, it helps you find books in a library. That little... Uh, you can see that little podium that's coming up. That's a tablet. And that lets you punch in what you're looking for. And this guy knows where everything is in the library, so he will guide you to it. Pretty if cool. I'm, if I'm ever in Hel- uh, Helsinki, I really want to see this library. Because, like, growing up, our local library, which is honestly very amazing, had trouble affording roof repairs. Yeah. <laughs> and then they have, like, this thing. You know, uh, my dad is on the, on the board <laughs> for that library. And it turns out that the guy who's been running it up until like the last 10 years just hoarded all the money. <laughs> and they've got this massive surplus. And they're trying to figure out what to spend it on. Well, that's that's encouraging because I can remember, you know, several collections were ruined by the leaky roof with the old building. So, you so, know. And that guy was just putting, was just squirreling it all away. So anyway, that's not the only thing they did for this robot. They also found that people were not using it for whatever reason. I would, I would be excited to use that little guy. But so they gave him look friendly, like without the eyes, I guess, pre eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But even if he wasn't, if I didn't think he had a personality, I would like to see how good it is at finding the book that I want. Right. So what they did, they also gave it a little bit of personality in terms of its movement. So if he's left alone for too long, he'll actually like start to squirm around and make little noises to let you know (laughs) that he's there. I'm here to help. If, You come and you put in a book title, and he finds it. He once he finds it, he's very excited. Yeah, he'll like do a little dance and beat. If he can't find it, he seems sad. (laughs) Oh, somebody needs to take the innards of this robot and put it into like one of the Comic Con, Dragon Con, like R two D two mods, and just have that. Of course, I guess with Disney, they'd probably follow a lawsuit. Yeah. But having R2-D2 help you find a book and then making the happy R2-D2 beeping, that would be pretty cool. I feel like they could make him friendly or even just by painting him, but, like, the eyes, just that was brilliant. Yeah. The eyes that did a lot for him. It is amazing what googly eyes can do. Now, they also put googly eyes on the, the spill robot. Yeah. But they weren't, like, I think they were just basic Google eyes, right? They, yeah. didn't, actually, they didn't actuate and give it personality. 
Well, that, that also serves a function because like people were running into it before because I didn't know which way it was going, and now like its eyes go the direction it's going. So brilliant, brilliant move. I now, wish that my UX problems could be solved. <laughs> just putting it Have you eyes. tried? Have you tried putting? <laughs> you know, it I on haven't eyes? tried putting it on a website or yeah. an app. So. so. There was that JavaScript library that would put eyes on your page that would follow the mouse. <laughs> oh, that's true. <laughs> Can you imagine just, like selling that to a client? <laughs> what is this? What is this song? This might not make any sense to you, but trust me, this is going to affect sales. All the Fortune 500 companies are going to start doing this. <laughs> so this one, I put this in because they use the word drone, but... It's, it's hard to imagine. It's not actually a robot. No. It's actually completely controlled, but it still is an interesting story. Drone fishermen can land in hot water as regulator investigates. They're actually having trouble finding what this guy did wrong, but they built a drone I just know something that, did go wrong. that a person could ride, and he used it to... So, like, they made a video. Like, the, this whole thing was designed to go viral, but they made a video of this guy fishing while hanging from a chair, f like, flown by a drone. And so... They think that maybe he violated the rule where it's like you're not supposed to fly a drone within 30 meters of a, of a human being. Maybe. Yeah. So it wasn't autonomous in any way. His friend was flying the drone as he was fishing. And they were in communication. Yeah. And they had tested uh, a much heavier load yeah. for a much longer amount of time before they did this. And he wasn't really going fishing from the drone. It was just... It's like they thought it would make a funny video. And he was wearing... And it did. He was wearing a full wetsuit. But, but no life jacket. No life jacket because, and this seems like a good idea, he was afraid that with the drone come down on top of him, the life jacket could get bound up in the rotors. Yeah. Pretty smart. Yeah, and swim away. So it seems like that he knew the risks and that he did it himself, and I don't think the regulators need to be involved here. But here, I'm going to advocate on the side of the government. Imagine that. What, what about if you had 50 guys doing this? <laughs> I think that that would be amazing for the next season of America's Funniest Home Videos. Or Canada's Home America's Most they Tragic still, Home Videos? Do they still make that show? I doubt it. Canada's Funniest Home Videos? I don't know. It's called Twitter now. <laughs> Speaking of Twitter. So yeah, Twitter. Uh, from time to time, the government agencies will put out requests of things that they need. They're looking to, to buy a bunch of something or, you know, hire a bunch of something. There was that time that the IRS needed 40,000 rounds of 10 millimeter. <laughs> Don't ask why. Mm, yeah, so this was one of the, in that vein. Attention city dwellers, we're interested in identifying university owned or commercially managed underground urban tunnels and facilities able to host research and experimentation. One, why does this need to be in the city? Two, what are they doing? And three, this is short notice. They asked for submissions by August 30th at 5 p.m. And then they, they posted some pictures to give you an idea of what kind of facilities they were looking for. And this for. tweet was on the 28th at 8.30 a.m. So Someone obviously, forgot to do their job. Obviously, a lot of people, you know, joked about this and were like, what's going on here? Are you expecting a world-ending event? <laughs> But they claim, no, they're doing training that would be, you know, like how to deal with things like this, shelters like this. So they want a real live one to run their training in. The ideal space would be a human-made underground environment spanning several city blocks with a complex layout and multiple stories, including atriums, tunnels, stairwells. Spaces that are currently closed off from pedestrians or can be temporarily used for testing are of interest. Are they making fallout vaults? What if they were just setting up the most badass paintball game that's ever existed? <laughs> it's a company like team building exercise. <laughs> I mean, it would be really awesome to shut down like the Washington DC Metro and do that kind of thing there because I mean you saw from Fallout that it's actually pretty cool down there. Well, in a like you're gonna die terrifying kind of way. Sure. <laughs> Speaking of dying and terrifying. Moving on to nonsense, Krista. Of course you, I added this you one. You put this for me. Just for you because you are terrified. I'm not terrified of black holes, but I do have an irrational fear. Well, how about the most badass black hole that's ever existed? Rumors are swirling around a black hole discovery. So I 
was the discovery just that there was a giant black hole? The biggest one we've ever seen. Yeah. Well, no, it, it's 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 crazier than that. It's the physics of it mean that a black hole with this mass should not exist. Because it would be a supernova, right? Well, no, it just it just it doesn't like for the, it to collapse in on itself and be this mass. It just doesn't it doesn't make sense. Not an actual picture. No. As it turns out, hard to get a picture <laughs> of a black hole. Yeah. So we're not entirely sure that it is a black hole. We know about it indirectly because of observation of gravitational waves, and we're trying to like figure that out. But wouldn't it be crazy if it, it like if we do the math and we discover and it's like this cannot be a naturally occurring black hole? It's a warp hole. It's, it's the, that's the premise of Interstellar. It's a wormhole. <laughs> Now, Krista, last week we found out that uh, black holes can eat neutron stars. And in fact, one is, well, I mean, it's not happening right now. Ever how many years ago, hundreds of millions of years ago, one was, was being eaten and we, we found it. That's terrifying. Yeah. So that means... It could spiral into our galaxy at any moment. That means that overall black hole activity might be increasing as they track you closer and closer. I honestly just don't know what to be afraid of most. What's number? What's that? What else is in the running? Uh, the the giant super earthquake on the west coast. Oh, the caldera. Yeah, you know they the cal no, no, not the caldera. There's another one like further up north. They say that there was a giant event, an earthquake that hit in like yeah. Washington and Oregon. It was like six point three. Yeah, and they were like, and it caused like a massive tsunami in Japan years and years ago, and like flooded half the, like. Well, listen, if that goes, crazy. the caldera is gonna go. Surely, right? I would think so. That's a combo event. Yeah. I read an article about that. We should include it one week. It's old, but it was interesting. Yeah, I saw that same article. No, there, something happened this last week there, right? Did there? Yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah, there was an earthquake. Oh. That's, isn't that good, though? They say if it's like small earthquakes, it means it's releasing pressure normally. What if the earthquake is, causing, is caused by black hole activity? And that's how it's getting you. We covered that last we, week. Did we? No, we didn't. We did it on the podcast. Oh, we did talk about this on the podcast. All right, new story. Spoiler. <laughs> TSA bans Star Wars Galaxy's Edge thermal detonator Coca-Cola bottles. <sighs> there they are. Now TSA I saw. Place on Earth. I saw a more recent story that said that they walked this back. Really? And said you could have them on the. Probably because there was a lot of backlash from families going to Disney. Well, you could literally buy them in the uh, the airport at some of the airport. Uh, oh, I thought shops. it was just at Disney. Is it? Yeah, I thought, yeah, I thought this was no, Disney that's specific. That, that's that new Disney Star Wars section that they've got. Oh. And those things are like $12. <laughs> that's not good. Yeah. You could definitely buy some Star Wars toys in one of the in one of the like the in in motion entertainment thing. Maybe it was not a drink, but we went through I think we did that on the Twitch stream. We went through the prices mm. and they're crazy. And so you can get a like a, a special mug that has blue mixed drink in it you know like the blue shit that he was drinking in that movie forty dollars wow i can't afford to go to disneyland especially not the star wars section and you're only allowed to stay there for a couple hours that's crazy but the now people you, will do it you can bring the lightsabers that they sell you for a couple <laughs> hundred you can bring those on the plane <sighs> it's the world we live in <clears throat> this story was incredible uh i didn't see this one now before we talk about this one, though, have you heard of the Mandela effect? Yes. No? Okay. So, oh, 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 didn't mean to do that yet. Let me give you a little quiz, right? In Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, the evil witch, what did she say to the mirror? Mirror, mirror, mirror on, on the, the wall. wall. Who's nope. the fairest of them all? Nope. She said magic mirror on the wall. Oh. Uh -huh. Blows your mind, right? Yeah. Everybody remembers mirror, mirror on the wall. Now, in Empire Strikes Back, what does Darth Vader say to Luke after he cuts his hand off? I'm your father, but not really. What's the full thing? Uh, Luke, I'm your father? Wrong. <laughs> it's no, I am your father. Oh. But everybody thinks it's Luke, I am your father. There are right? bigger ones like the... Uh, Bernstein Sh Bears? Yeah, there's that. The Shaquille O'Neal thing where they thought he was in a movie about being a genie. Shazam? Yeah. But I remember that movie. It's, but it's not a real movie. <laughs> that one blew my mind. So, and the biggest one is Nelson Mandela, right? Like, people have real memories of Nelson Mandela dying in the 80s. But he didn't. He, he died in, like, 2013. 
So this is very much in that same vein. I tried to glitch the simulation and all I got was a bottle of pee. A growing community called Randonauts believe that journeying to random locations can help put us in new realities. So this is the same idea. Now the idea behind the Mandela effect is like mirror mirror on the wall. I would fight you if you told me. But if I hadn't watched a video about that and they played the real thing. <laughs> that, so that the theory that some people have is that this is the multiverse, right? And at some point, some of us are crossing over. And it's almost exactly the same with tiny, tiny differences. Well, that explains the night terrors. <laughs> <laughs> and stuff like deja vu and, you know, those these little inconsistencies with your memory have to do with that. Definitely not that we're getting older. Yeah, but well, it's, this affects huge swaths of people. Like, we all remember them. We're all different. In fact, I heard in that same video, they were playing uh, James Earl Jones. He was being interviewed about that. And he quotes it as, Luke, I am your father. Oh, wow. Yeah. So the idea here is that if we're in a simulation or if we're in the multiverse or whatever, then our intentions, it's kind of like speculative execution, right? Like the program knows what you're going to do because you do a routine or you think about what you're going to do ahead of time. So how can you beat that? Travel to random coordinates. <laughs> and then if you disappear from that city and reappear in another city, you'll know that you're in the multiverse. Well, do, will you know? Well, yeah. I mean, if you, it's like I, I randomly selected Seattle and I showed up in Dallas, I would know. I would think. I guess. I mean, if you jumped universes, though. But I guess if it was the AI. Now, these people have talked about some of the effects that they've seen and they claim, and of course, you know, you take this with a grain of salt, that they will sometimes come up on wildlife that's just standing completely still as if it's loading. <laughs> or it's scared because it sees someone near it and it freezes. Uh, I, I guess actually technically you would have memories of going to Seattle, but then when you look at your old ticket stub, it would be Dallas. Well, that's that's less. This is less multiverse and more break the algorithm, uh. break the simulation. So you're trying to get ahead of the predictive execution, far enough ahead that it can't cash ahead of you <laughs> it sounds like with the animal thing it does, sounds like someone who doesn't know anything about animal behavior like, they, they had some other uh examples i can't remember exactly what they were but that oh, was just weird stuff i've definitely seen mpeg artifacts in the sky <laughs> <laughs> so did the people who like tried to predict sombra and overwatch so if you want to be one of these people if you want to be a random knot they actually have an instagram and you just message it and say you know give me a place to go and they'll give you coordinates and you're supposed to just drop everything that you're doing and go there as quickly as possible to try to outrun the processing power and break the cycle. And they also believe that the more of us that are doing that, the, <laughs> the more likely it is to break be. things. Yeah. That's really funny. I, I like this is it's not really the same thing, but like sometimes I would just take I called them mental health days, but it was just like a day where I would just do whatever I wanted to do. It's kind of the same thing. How many of those days were playing Minecraft? I didn't. I didn't play a lot of games like when I was in college and stuff. I actually didn't download Minecraft because I knew I would no life it, and I had to finish my senior work. How's uh, World of Warcraft going? It's okay. I'm not. I'm not like super into it yet. I'm like level twelve, I think. Last time we talked to you, you're only level ten, so it you're moving slow. Quick. Yeah. Mm. Not like Overwatch at all. No, like Overwatch you, immediately really you hit were me like hard. Yeah. Double platinum, something or other. No, this game, it's fine. I've played it with friends, but not. I'm not getting, like, I don't have the nostalgia factor for it either because I didn't play it when it came out years ago, so. And Wendell, you said that you weren't interested in going to the Star Wars, or the Disney Star Wars experience, right? Right. Now, now you don't want a $40 drink, which, no. I don't know what's wrong with you. But <laughs> Buy more products. What? Consume. What Consume. if, in another Star Wars experience, you could go into space, Asterix? <laughs> we finally have more details on that Star Wars hotel. It's not really a hotel at all. So, yeah, this is the Star Wars space experience or whatever. Star Cruiser. Who cares? Except it's not. It's not Star Trek. It's not a Star Cruiser. It's just a building where they've blacked out all the windows <laughs> and made it a simulated space experience. Fine. Uh, I, did you catch what it cost? No. 
I don't know if they mentioned that, but I, it's you know it's going to be crazy. It didn't. It seemed like that this was just like the, a repurposed ride like they already had. Like there was like I think when I was like eleven or twelve, I went to Disney and there was a like small shuttle bus sized thing that was totally already a Star Wars experience, like the seventies Star. Oh Wars. yeah, yeah. They had the Space things. Mountain? It yeah, was, it was like it was the moving. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. That was a really cool actually. But this, no, you going to live here for a day or two. Mm. This is actually a destination where, you, but, you know, when you leave your room, the whole thing is simulated that you're on some kind of starship. Oh. And you can go interact with things and. You just can't leave for a day or you two. You probably can't leave, which means that the restaurants are going to be about $100 a plate. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> The water fountains are going to require credits. Why don't they just do a Star Wars themed cruise ship? Because that would be more realistic. Because it's like, I want to leave. It's like, you're going to drown. It would be tougher. I mean, a, a lot of the, the draw of a cruise ship is being on deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, enjoying the I mean, ocean. Just gonna, enjoying the islands. You also, uh, do the cruise... Not all cruise ships have rooms that open to indoors, right? Right. So... <laughs> Outside your room is the vacuum of space. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> that seems like what it is. I don't know. <laughs> oh, man. So, I did not know about... This is maybe one of the darkest... I didn't see the story. Little, so. Oh, you're going to love this, Krista. This is going to make your skin crawl. So, there are parts of the internet that are dedicated to finding out and doxing the information of porn stars their addresses and real names so wow that's creepy right I mean because you know guys are going to get obsessed and try to visit well Bang Brothers found out about this and decided to take action it was uh, they, they bought a huge porn doxing forum and set fire to it so the, the doxing forum that they bought was porn wiki leaks which <laughs> which is a forum dedicated to revealing the names and personal information of porn performers, including several in the Girls Do Porn trial. Now, I don't know what the Girls Do Porn trial is, do you? No, I had no idea what that was. But the pictures from the hard drives being on fire was pretty nice. So that's what they tweeted. And, uh, I think like some neckbeard is just like, no, the sacred tapes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I worked like, so hard. I'm sure they keep local copies. Like, I really don't. This is, I mean... I don't really don't get this. And it's crazy, too, because, like, California and a bunch of other places require by law that you maintain records on this kind of thing. So, of course, it's going to leak. Or, of course, that if you know what you're doing, you can go and discover this information. But good Lord. But also, you know, I don't think most porn stars make a ton of money. Yeah. Like, they do well, I think. But I'm sure there's some who don't. And you're, what you're getting in return for that fame and then this obsession is not enough to merit yeah Boy. no well and I feel like this is, this is like what we were talking about earlier with like low barrier to entry jobs like there's probably dozens of people who try to make it in porn and just get exploited so or this oh, yeah. sort of thing happens to them yeah I mean it's you have to be a pretty girl and it turns out those are pretty common so unfortunate but Shout out to Bang Brothers, I guess, for, I don't know how, I don't know, maybe a drop of a bucket in the ocean yeah. in terms of. <laughs> in terms of actual cost. I've got the title for this episode this of the episode, news. We're going to forget it by Tuesday. But. No, I don't, I won't forget this one. Are you ready for it? Yep. I don't think you're ready for Moon Jelly. <laughs> Uh, China's lunar rover has found something weird on the far side of the moon. It's some kind of Is jelly. It jelly? They said it's a gel-like substance, a very colorful gel-like substance. It's moon sand. <laughs> well, that is moon the... Moon sand's uh, not really gel, I guess, but... The, the, the most simple explanation is maybe some kind of glass. And oh. glass technically is a liquid, so I guess... Yeah. Uh, so, but, you know, I'm pretty sure what this is, is something that's going to get stuck. Once we take a lander back to the moon, <laughs> it's going to land in it. <laughs> And then they're going to, you know, one of the astronauts is going to step in it. They're going to bring that home. And then it's going to be like the blob. That's going to be the end of humanity. <laughs> the moon jelly is going to kill us all. But the good news is uh, the lunar rover was scheduled to 
like move on from this place, but now that they've seen the moon jelly, they're gonna stop and study it. Like, oh, we gotta figure out what this is. Yeah. One of the astronauts is just eating it. <laughs> mm, spreading it on toast. There's no people like, on the moon, this is all robots. Where did you get that bread? <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. He just had it stuffed in a space suit. Uh, well, we talk about, you know, some women go into pornography voluntarily and then get exploited or get their address revealed, and that's sad. But it's not nearly as sad as this story. Court, girl broke child porn law by texting explicit video of herself. Teen girl 16 is prosecuted under the law intended to protect people like her. So she exploited herself. What are prosecutors thinking? <laughs> Congratulations. You <laughs> exploited yourself. <laughs> I, uh, I've heard of stories like this before where like just having it, even if it's yourself or like you send it to your also underage boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, it can still break that law. Yeah, but who are we, who's the victim in that crime? In theory, uh, what the hell was that? What was that? The window moved slightly. Is there a bird in there? I hope not. That would be bad. So your, these laws are to protect children from exploitation but how does prosecuting that same child uh, in theory i guess it could be leaked it seems like just a stern talking to like why yeah, did you do that, that? Would, don't do yeah, that yeah. Would i don't be. think you would want to like try to actually like also go after that case if it got leaked that's its own form of punishment yeah so, like yeah. she doesn't benefit from that yeah i don't know it's uh it seems like a mess and dumb. It's a mad world we live in. Well, that's going to follow her around for a long time. So that, that Well, now there's a news story about it. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to name this person, but I bet in her hometown. It's, it's, they probably it's the talk of the town. Yeah. Yeah. Especially if she got arrested. Oh, racism. <laughs> we, this was amazing. We have a lot of issues with racism. Although I think you could say that about any point in history after people actually started to meet each other. All right. <laughs> like the only time there wasn't any racism is when the tribes hadn't contacted each other yet. <laughs> and we're trying to do better, and some things that we do toward that are good. Most of them have terrible unintended consequences, and some of them are just horrible, horrible marketing tactics. Cadbury has failed to solve racism with a multicolored chocolate bar. And maybe not for the reason you expect, because looking <laughs> at this picture, the chocolates are still segregated. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, the message here is separate but equal. <laughs> still all chocolate. Still in the same bar, but in separate little designations. You think there's some people who buy that and eat like the top three quarters of it and it's like I ain't eating that last one white chocolate's not even the best flavor of chocolate but I think these are all the same flavor <laughs> triggered yeah. if they're different flavors tell us your favorite chocolate flavor below wouldn't that be hilarious if those were different flavors and you're like with a group of friends and you really don't like one of the flavors <laughs> you're like oh, oh this is just as good white chocolate's not just as good though it's not even it's chocolate. not even really chocolate yeah. right yeah. so I, that's what I assumed so I assumed the top part was white chocolate the bottom was dark and then the middle was like Milk chocolate, and then that like caramely color was like either caramel or toffee. I think they're all the same. This is important information that oh, could no. change. No, no, you're right. Dark blended milk and white chocolate all under one wrap, so they do taste. Blended different. is interracial. <laughs> interracial chocolate is that. Also, it's in India, where I imagine that. Oh, that that might be just enough. being Indian. You could run the full gambit of these flesh colors, yeah. right? It's interesting. Now, they a lot of people were dismissing it on social media and making fun of it because they're like, oh, congratulations, you solved racism, like the headline said. But I also said they've sold out. Hmm. I mean, you are getting... It's basically a sampler pack of Cadbury chocolate. <laughs> Maybe that says something about how we should be in our society. We should sample them all. But then that just becomes sexual. Yeah, it becomes a little weird when you say it that way. And with that tone... <laughs> Uh, everybody's heard about the Popeye chicken sandwiches yet. I mean, this is this is I when I like Popeyes. I've heard of it. When memes become reality, and it's a dark world. I don't want to live on this happen. planet anymore. Well, you're living in it. <laughs> Not only are you living in it, but the last election was it. <laughs> and for some reason, the, something just captures the imagination of the internet. And what happens? 
this, this kind of madness happens. I have this sandwich on my mind, according to a man who is suing Popeyes for running out of the chicken sandwiches. He went to three different locations trying yep. to find it. Popeyes and long said waits. And the, the Popeyes even said that they're not going to restock it. So, yep. Temporarily. I think they're like massing up for a big. But they're going to do like the vault strategy with Disney used to do that, right? No, no, no. it's not necessarily that. But they they don't want this kind of thing to happen. Yeah. So until mm. they can get everybody a chicken sandwich, it's like the old, if you didn't bring enough for everybody, don't uh. chew your gum in class. You know. <laughs> so they're trying to not have shortages. But you got to wonder, will lightning strike twice? I, I don't think there's even a Popeyes in this town. There's one over. There's one. Oh, There's well, yeah, one over. There was one, they put one in, like, my family's tiny eastern Kentucky town briefly, and no one liked it, hmm. which was strange because I figured, like, a chicken place would do really well there. But, but it's not, isn't it kind of like a Creole style? I think Bojangles is the superior. Bojangles is good. Maybe that's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, well. I don't know. I, my town did, did not take kindly to Popeye's. None of us have had the sandwich, so I guess we can't really understand what it's like. Maybe we shouldn't judge Maybe it did ruin this man's life to not get that sandwich. Krista, you got married too soon. Oh. You I, should have waited. I, I got married, yeah. You should have waited and you could have had this. You've probably never played this game, have you? No. <laughs> Duke Nukem voice actor can now officiate your wedding. Or the big cat, if that's more your style. I don't know Big the Cat. I uh, yeah, I didn't recognize that reference. So, hell to the king guy. Do you think if Duke Nukem officiates your wedding... Will he give you the, I'm going to tear off your head and shit down your neck line? <laughs> if you want to. Do you promise to, to tear <laughs> yeah. off your head? I'm so, there's a, one of those video services where you can give you know, a voice actor or something like five bucks and then they'll say your thing. He probably needs to go on there because like. Yeah, there is one he where. He said he was willing to do it. Like he was going to actually like, go do it. Fiverr did that for a while with the, you know, the Fiverr guy. And then. Yeah, there's one where, and maybe that's, maybe that's what Fiverr is, where they'll call you for like 60 seconds. Oh, I'll leave a message. Hmm. That's a weird kind of star whoring yourself. Yeah. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it for the right price. <laughs> <laughs> Juggalos. I want you to do the Intel voice. Every time we do a Juggalo story, they always use the same stock photo because it's a really good picture. <laughs> but this story uh, is only uh, tentatively related to the the posse. But it is an interesting headline. A U.S. man is suing after a legless juggalo crashed into him with a golf cart. We're living in the best time. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a question. So the guy on the on the right, what's what's his name? That is uh, Shaggy. No, oh, no, that's Violent J. Violent J. Do you think he's like some sort of like different version of Guy Fieri? Like, is there some sort of weird world where, like, what if Guy Fieri is the villain and Violent J is, like, the one who has to keep him in check? And that's why he's violent. Someone write that fanfic. But they don't, I like guess, so if one of them dies, the other one absorbs them? Or? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like Highlander. <laughs> there uh, could be only I don't trust one. Guy Fieri. I might trust Juggalo. Violent J. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a throwaway story. Just an excuse to talk about the Juggalos. Now this one, this story is terrifying. Yeah. If you'll think back to, um, that was it the 60s with uh, thalidomide? <laughs> we had thalidomide. And Thought you were going to go for MK Ultra. It was, the, it was a way of uh, reducing nausea, I think, right? Is that what it was? I think that's what it was for, yeah. For so, women. of course, if you're pregnant, you get nauseous a lot. You get morning sickness. So the doctors were like, oh, we've got something for that. Well, it had some unintended consequences on the little babies. And uh, they, they were born a little weird. And so we have something like that here, except it's not an issue of the doctors not knowing. It's an issue of the pharmacy screwing up. Babies develop werewolf syndrome after mix up, a medicine mix-up in Spain. So they were given minoxidil, which is like a hair-growing agent thing. And they became super hairy. But the good news is doctors have said that we expect this to clear up on its own. And the babies should be fine. After they stopped taking the hair growth hormone. Apparently it was supposed to be uh, some sort of like something for stomach ills. Yeah, it was uh, like an antacid or something. Yeah. So imagine how terrifying that is when you're like four years old. And it's like you, you grab the, 
the picture album. It's like, hey, mommy, let's look at my birth pictures. Oh, God. <laughs> Why was I so furry? Also, what a great advertisement for the minoxidil or whatever it's called. Yeah. It's like, this works. <laughs> Just look at these werewolf babies. <laughs> Do you think that there's some like real edgy goths that's like, oh, let's have a werewolf baby? <laughs> that would be bad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, given the opportunity, people are terrible. They would totally do that. <laughs> Smuggling that stuff into the hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Our last two stories are dark and both from Japan. And first is uh, it's a it's a weird solution. Solution? Yeah, it's not really a solution. To an extreme problem that the Japanese have. Uh, BBC has said that anti-groping stamp is going to let victims mark their assailants. I tell you how I'd mark an assailant. <laughs> and it's not with no damn stamp. So we were talking about this the other day. And I was like, Krista, but their culture is all about like... Not making a scene. You will be really looked down on. And she was just insistent. It's like, oh, no, I'm, I'm kind of an asshole. Like if someone cat calls me, like... Mm. <laughs> So, Look, yeah. much less, I've never been groped, thankfully, but if I were groped, like, fists would fly. So the solution is supposed to be this little stamp. Now, this is not visible outside of ultraviolet light. So while you're being groped, you go into your purse or whatever, and you pull out this little stamp, and you stamp your assailant. And... And... Uh, dot, dot, dot. It's invisible. Is that supposed to be, like, a social shamer? Yeah, if it's invisible, who cares? I mean, Does the you, bus maybe, like... You put it on them, and then they put their hand under like the the bus stop thing, like when they're getting their ticket, and but then the bus person sees it or imagine, the train person. Imagine how easy that would be to abuse. The yeah, like you could just mark anybody. Yeah, yeah. right. And uh, uh, if that's not the case, and if this is just supposed to be like quote unquote shame, if you're the kind of guy who gets up in the morning and you're like, hey, I'm gonna grow up somebody on the bus today, like is shame really a part of your world? <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't understand. I guess the only way I can see it is if, like you managed to get it on the person who groped you without them noticing, and then somehow that alerts someone in the train station. Yeah, I guess when they try to get a ticket or something later, and then the train station does something. Else. Or they don't know to wash it off, and then yeah. you go to the cops, and then they're like, "No, I didn't do that," and they whip out the the UV wand. That might work, I guess. But what if you went to a swimming pool the day before? You know, that's and then it's good, like, oh no. And swimming pools are probably a great place to grope people. So. The odds are high. So you have what? Do you have two UV marks: one for like your entrance to the swimming pool, and one <laughs> no. for the grope. Well, when you go to, uh, it's probably not like that anymore. But I remember when I was a kid, I went to Disney World. That's how they marked you. Yeah, they did the yeah. UV. Yeah. yeah, they still do that in a lot of places. Uh, well, if you think that's terrifying, and you're thinking to yourself, "Wow, as a young lady, I'm not ever going to go to Japan." Of course, if you're a young lady, you're not watching this. But, uh, we uh, have a very small percentage of female viewers. Like zero. I don't want to brag. <laughs> I occasionally watch More this. than most tech channels, as it turns out. But <clears throat> that is not the only way that the gropers can get you. Mobile penis flashes on the rise <laughs> in Japan. So th We did a similar story to this a while back. And it, I think it was in the U.S. Where people will airdrop a picture of their penis to your phone if you have it set to receive random airdrops. So yeah. the person might be like, what was the, 30 meters away from you? Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's it was a small like vicinity that you could receive an airdrop from. But they talk about how, you know, it's almost always line of sight because they want to see the reaction. Yeah. Yeah. So that's when you go. But <laughs> they actually arrested somebody, which is good. Maybe that's a step in the right direction. Yeah. I've always been told not to react. Like, yeah. Having been flashed before, you just don't react. You don't look, you don't react. I guess you could just laugh, but then it might get violent. <laughs> yeah, laughing or, you know, again, the... Hmm. I don't know. Sad. If you're a mobile penis flasher, tell us your thoughts. <laughs> 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 also, please unsubscribe and don't We're going to <laughs> We're going to get like a five-paragraph <laughs> treatise on why I mobile flash yeah. oh. and how you shouldn't judge me for it. And they're going to have a Pepe icon for their username. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, yeah, Pepe's but, been redeemed. Yeah, Pepe's back. And I, I saw a bunch of... For that episode. I saw a bunch of photos, not in the article related to that, where it was the you know free Hong Kong stuff, and they all had a Pepe. <laughs> they really are using it. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, that's it for the news this week. We'll see you next oh, week. Man, that took a long time today. Bye. My cats are going to be starving. Bye.